The prelude to the story starts by showing two people eating raw flesh in the snow-covered wilderness. One of them offers it to a man who's not eating, but he does not accept it. We see a fourth man lying in the snow, who is very likely deceased. Then they start walking. It's just three of them in the intimidating cold environment. Soon they stop to look ahead, like they see something we don't. The man who refused to eat asks them what it is and the other two start running away in fear. He watches how one of them gets grabbed by an invisible creature. We hear its growls without seeing it. The creature, whatever it is, mutilates the man. Following this introduction, the scene changes to a girl lying in bed with her boyfriend. He tells her she doesn't want to be there because she can't spend her birthday like this. The girl is Nat, saying she doesn't have a choice. In the place they're in, they don't simply let someone walk out of the front door. Once she asks about Tim, we see an elder man in another room with a name tag that has Timothy on it. He is an orderly at the psychiatric hospital in which they all reside. Ethan is Nat's boyfriend. He comes to Tim, informing the orderly that it's Nat's birthday today. He also gives several cupcakes to him. The man wants to eat them but he can't. He does not even want Ethan to show them to him. Funny enough, the next thing we see is him eating a cupcake while Nat has one too with a candle on it. Then Ethan behaves like a trickster by getting Tim to come to the window so he can spill a drink on him. Ethan makes it look like an accident. This causes Tim to put his keycard in his pocket and starts removing his sweater. Ethan uses this opportunity to steal the keycard and start running away with Nat. Of course, Tim starts chasing them. Ethan uses the keycard to open a door. The duped man gets stuck behind the door while the couple runs through the hospital, looking for an exit. Eventually, they escape through a window in the washroom. They rush out and enter Ethan's car. The man quickly removes a notice on his window before the couple starts driving away. As they do, we see the notice Ethan threw away has the words, Missing Hikers, on it. The next scene shows them driving along an open road. Ethan puts in a CD that plays electronic music, which fits their escape quite well. He sings and dances to it, prompting his girlfriend to laugh. We then see new people setting up a tent outside. One girl thinks covering herself with makeup is more important than helping her friends with the task. She is Pippa, greeting an arrival she calls Teddy. We learn he is Nat's older brother, so this gang is associated with the couple we watched escape the hospital. The girl named Frances asks Teddy about his opinion on Ethan's scheme to take Nat out of the hospital. He doesn't know what to say about it, but Pippa tells her to be more adventurous. Alone with Pippa, Teddy whispers to her what Nat thinks of him. She tells him it's not good. He is surprised that she's still mad because it's been ages since something happened. He asks Pippa if she can talk to Nat for him. She doesn't answer due to the arrival of the escapee and Ethan. Everyone greets them and they are all happy until Teddy joins them. Later, Pippa is sitting in a tent with Nat. Pippa tells her she should give Teddy a chance. Then Ethan asks the makeup girl if she filled out certain forms, which she did not. She asks Teddy to do it. At a different time, Frances comes to Nat to say her mom was asking about her. She is glad Nat is still with them. The girl gives Nat a birthday present. Opening the small box, she takes out a necklace with a cruciform on it. Frances tells her to keep fighting because there is a possibility that Nat might not be so lucky next time. Soon Ethan starts going somewhere with Pippa to deliver the forms. They arrive at a house and knock on its door. Since no one answers, the duo invite themselves into the house. We see a man using a mallet in a certain room. When Pippa calls out if anyone is present, the man hears her and he closes a seemingly important plastic box. Pippa asks Ethan if they can leave because she thinks the place is creepy. Just as she's saying this, a man appears behind her. He can't believe how she entered his home and insulted it. She starts apologizing, but turns out he was just messing with her. After he introduces himself as Blackwood, Ethan gives him the forms. Switching back to the other place, we see Nat smoking alone near the lake. Teddy approaches her and asks if she is okay. She jokes about how she's living the dream. Teddy mentions that the last time they went camping was also the last time they saw their mom healthy. He wished he came back sooner. Disagreeing with her brother, she tells him he wouldn't have regardless. Once she leaves, Teddy is left alone, feeling upset. Then, we see two of their other friends, Cam and Mike. Cam is holding the plastic box we saw in Blackwood's house and then gives it to an unknown man. He says the owner of the house his friends went to is giving away burger patties. The big man thinks eating them isn't a smart idea. His words cause a strange expression to form on Cam's face. He does not know how to respond to the big man, so he takes his leave with Mike. In the next scene, Cam gets the barbecue ready. He looks at the patties he's about to grill with delight. After grilling them, he prepares burgers that he gives to his friends. We watch the group consume them. But upon giving a burger to Pippa, the cautious girl tells Cam he doesn't know where it came from. However, it merely takes a few seconds for her to give in to eating the food. The sole individual who does not indulge in the meal is Mike, because he's a vegan. At night, Ethan tells Nat he has a present for her that he will give later. Soon, Nat announces to her friends that she loves them. As she talks, someone rudely tosses a bag on their table to knock some items off. It is Blackwood, and Cam rudely asks him where he came from. The man instantly makes their night interesting by telling them they should tie themselves up. He even presents zip ties. Blackwood says it's a simple request, but the gang clearly sees it as a nonsensical one. Once Ethan stands up, Blackwood points a gun at him. He tosses the zip ties in their area and demands they do what they're told. The scene changes to all of them being restrained. 
The man who tricked them instructs the group to listen to him carefully. He says there is a monster in these woods that hunts down cannibals to eat them alive. That is why it's after him. Since they ate his patties, now the monster will be after them. The patties he gifted them with were made from a few. If he feeds the monster, it leaves him alone for some time. Therefore, he has no choice except to engage in this ritual. He creates cannibals to feed the monster. Cam starts running away and Blackwood breaks a bottle over his head to prevent his escape. Then, for some reason, he holds a bag of blood over his head. He punctures it and blood spills on him. Following this, Blackwood puts the restrained group inside the back of his van. While he drives them to a certain location, Francis manages to take out a lighter from Nat's boot. She uses it to start burning Nat's zip tie. Eventually, the van stops and we see how all of them are now free. Ethan is the brave one to open the doors, which surprisingly aren't locked. However, there is probably a reason for this. He enters the driver's area to discover that Blackwood isn't there. Coming out, he tells Cam the keys are gone. Cam reasonably says the man couldn't have gone far and starts running away. Alone in the dark woods, Cam yells for their captor to show himself. As the group argues elsewhere about what they should do, we observe a shadow approaching a terrified Cam. All we hear is him screaming. Back to the group, Ethan decides they should find Cam. Despite Teddy wanting to do something else, no one argues with Ethan's decision. Come morning, we see the gang is still alive in the woods. Pippa is curious to know about the monster. Ethan tells her there isn't one because they've been there all night and have not seen it. Then we get a moment of Nat being alone with her brother. He starts telling the girl he's sorry about leaving her. She says it's not what he did to her, but rather what he did to their mom. Now he shows up, expecting everything to be the same. Nat says their mother asked for him every day, and every day Nat was forced to lie that Teddy would be there tomorrow. As she is talking about it, Teddy slowly walks forward after seeing something. His sister quickly gets in front of him and points out how he's not even listening. She wants him to leave her alone. Afterward, Nat is with Ethan, asking if he thinks something happened to Cam. Her boyfriend does not know. What he does know is that he's sorry for bringing her there. We have to agree that this situation is worse than being in a psychiatric hospital. Teddy says it was a mistake. He also complains about there being no van. At this point, Ethan tells him he should run away like he always does. This prompts Teddy to insult him, in addition to standing right in front of his sister's boyfriend. Ethan dares him to do something and Teddy doesn't shy away from his dare. Due to getting pushed, Ethan gets him on the ground. What stops the fight is Francis telling them Pippa is missing. It doesn't take long for Ethan to find her though. The troubled girl says she wants to go home. So far, this situation seems the hardest for her. At night, Ethan tells his friends they aren't leaving the woods during darkness. Therefore, they must stay another night. He tells Teddy they should take turns being on the lookout. Teddy firmly tells him he's not staying up, but the next thing we see is him doing exactly that. While the other three sleep near each other, Francis is praying. Then we see from very likely the monster's point of view how it watches them from a distance. Soon Teddy looks in its direction and thinks he sees something. At that moment, Francis puts her hand on him, scaring him. She wants to tell him she thinks they will be okay before going to sleep. During his watch, Teddy hears sounds that make him get up to look. In a short time, he walks away in fear. When he hears growling, he runs to the group. This wakes them up and he instructs them to stay silent. He whispers, reminding them that something is in the woods. Turning around, Nat screams in fear upon seeing what it is. Running away is all they can do. They settle in some ruined area in the woods. Then, Frances falls somewhere alone. We see the bone sticking out of her leg. Due to hearing her scream, Nat runs in the girl's direction. Yet Ethan gets to her first with Pippa. As both of them are dragging the injured Frances, the siblings arrive too. The two guys get her up to help her walk with them. Shortly after, Nat sees the monster behind them and they all stop to look. Ethan tells the girls to go ahead, so they listen to him. Unfortunately, Teddy also wants to run. The cowardly boy lets go of Francis, causing her to fall. Ethan tells him they're not leaving her to perish, but Teddy cares more about saving himself. Therefore, he flees. Now Ethan resorts to dragging away Francis by himself while being watched by the monster. Once Ethan stops, the girl starts praying. He looks around for just a few seconds, though in that time the poor girl ends up vanishing. Only her necklace is left, which he picks up. Yelling out to her does not make her reappear. With her disappearance, the bravest member of the party starts running through the dark woods alone until he locates the girls. He informs Nat about her brother running away and shows her Francis's necklace. Then, the trio cautiously approaches another ruined area. Nat feels the need to hold her boyfriend's hand and Pippa hold Nat's hand too. Together, they approach the new area. Soon, they find a kettle hanging over a fire. There is also a tent there. As Ethan slowly heads for the tent, a man behind him says he doesn't think Ethan should be doing that. He is the big man we saw earlier who refused the patas from Cam. He is much more capable than they are, for he is armed with a rifle. Ethan asks for his help, but the man is non-compliant. He deals with the trio by saying he will turn around and when he turns back, they should be gone. He's certainly not the nicest man in the woods. While he has his back turned to them, Ethan continues to say they need his help because they have been kidnapped. Upon turning around, the man says he's sorry to hear that. He loads his rifle before aiming it at them. 
This prompts Ethan to walk away with Pippa. However, the bravest member of the group is now Nat, because she continues to stand in front of the loaded rifle. She even comes closer to the man, telling him he needs to help them. Nat is someone who understands that an unknown monster is more terrifying than a known human with a gun. The next scene shows the four of them sitting together with their backs toward each other. This is how they maintain an efficient lookout. Then the monster appears and they all stand. The man aims his rifle in its direction. The problem is that he does not see the monster. After the group tells him several times to shoot what they can clearly see, Ethan starts taking the rifle from the man. But the man overpowers him, pushing Ethan to the ground. Shortly after he collects himself, Ethan gets taken by the monster. The man still does not see it. All he observes is Ethan levitating. The monster starts eating Ethan and the man is forced to shoot in the location where he believes the monster would be. Getting struck by the bullet, the monster drops Ethan before turning around. It pushes the man out of its way because it's not interested in devouring a non-cannibal. Soon it gets shot down by Teddy, who holds the man's rifle. He wants to give it another shot, yet the rifle is out of ammo, so they resort to running away again. The trio, without Ethan, hides behind a wall. Teddy peeks out to see the monster there. He wants the girls to follow him as he crawls. They all crawl to remain hidden from the monster in this tense moment. Then, Teddy takes out a flashlight. While he is in another area, the monster approaches the girls slowly from behind. To save them, Teddy yells out to the monster and tells the girls to run. For the first time, he has taken an action to save someone at his own expense, for the monster starts chasing him. Nat says they need to save Teddy, but Pippa wants to run away. She says he abandoned her, making him a terrible brother. Pippa also thinks he's already deceased. Afterward, we switch to Teddy running alone in the woods. He looks around to check where the monster could be. He doesn't see it, yet it sees him. All Teddy has is his flashlight. Alas, it can't help him too much and the boy shakes in fear, knowing he has nothing on the monster. Seconds later, it grabs Teddy by his head from behind. Subsequently, we return to the girls as they walk through the woods. Soon, they hear yelling in the distance. This prompts Nat to take out a flare from her backpack to walk with it while it's lit. The duo walks through an area that has human skeletons on the ground. We see a severely injured Frances there, who sees Nat before Nat sees her. When Frances calls out to her, Nat rushes to her friend. Frances advises her to go because this is the area where the monster feeds. At this point, Nat replies that Blackwood told them it eats people alive. She mentions that it won't eat someone it thinks is lifeless. That is why Blackwood covered himself in blood, to conceal himself. Nat says they have to trick the monster into thinking they are deceased. So she starts covering herself in blood from a nearby corpse. Pippa, however, cannot engage in such a disgusting activity. Prior to leaving, Nat assures Francis they will come back for her. She also gives her wounded friend the necklace with the cruciform. The next scene shows the duo continuing to run through the woods. It does not take long for Pippa to stop, saying she can't do this anymore. But she will lose her life if she doesn't keep going. Nat says. Instead of running, Nat takes her to a hiding place behind a wall. There, Pippa tells her friend she loves her and Nat returns the sentiment. They peek out from the wall to see the monster ahead. Nat holds Pippa's hands, telling her to close her eyes. They both sit with their eyes closed. In a few seconds, Nat peeks out again. Once Pippa asks if the monster is gone, it suddenly picks her up and starts devouring the poor girl. Soon it drops her alive and screeches into the sky. Then Nat starts running. In the process of her escape, she makes a misstep that brings her to the ground. She sees the monster walking in the distance, but it doesn't look like it sees her. Unexpectedly, it appears near the fallen girl and inspects her for several tense seconds. It leaves because it probably thinks she is deceased, for she is covered in the blood. Left alone, Nat sits up to look around. Since it's clear, she starts limping away. As she walks, she sees a light in the distance that she approaches. Approaching it, she sees it's a flashlight lying beside her brother. Nat instantly starts mourning for his possibly lifeless condition. She can't do this by herself, she says. This is when she loses it and yells out to the monster to come get her. Thankfully, Teddy wakes up, causing Nat to tell him not to leave her. He says he is sorry for what he did in the past. He was scared and selfish. In his tearful position, he wants his sister to know he shouldn't have left her with their mom. Furthermore, he tells the last person he loves not to give up, because she is the bravest person he knows. But now Teddy wants her to give him a final favor. He does not want to be alive once the monster returns to him. Of course, his sister doesn't want to hear such horrific words. She advises him to pretend like he's lifeless. Doing that will have the monster leave him alone. He says soon he won't need to pretend. Him loving her is the last statement she hears from her brother. Afterward, she grabs a heavy rock to bring it down on the severely wounded Teddy. Taking his flashlight, Nat leaves. Eventually, she is fortunate enough to find herself on the road. She limps along it until she starts going downhill, from which she sees a house ahead. Nat goes in that direction and locates their tent. Entering it, she takes car keys from her backpack. Then she passes the house of Blackwood before sitting in her car. She tries starting the machine, yet it's difficult. Shortly after, Nat looks in the backseat to see the wrapped birthday present for her that Ethan was likely telling her about. Undoing the wrapping reveals a framed photo of Nat alongside her mother. It's no surprise that the present makes her cry. However, her dire situation cannot have her looking at it for long, so she sets it to the side to try starting the car again. After failing for a second time, 
The girl exits the vehicle. She comes to the house and finds a broken bottle piece. After that, she enters the house, shining her flashlight in the dark interior. She walks slowly and quietly, before entering a room where she sees the pad is made from human meat. With all of its utensils that are used to produce the inhumane products, it is a room that evokes disgust from our heroine. Consequently, she is forced to vomit. When she leaves the grisly room, Nat continues to search the house. Soon, the search stops because Blackwood finally shows himself on the stairs. She insults the man and he says he only did what had to be done. He tells her a short story about how all of this began. He was in a plane crash that resulted in several people having to survive in a frozen wasteland. Due to their starvation, they resorted to eating the pilot. Blackwood's cannibalism summoned the monster and it followed him to this day. He calls Nat a survivor like himself. He adds that she should do what he does by feeding humans to people. Nat violently responds to this craziness by stabbing the man with the broken bottle. Since she gave him hell, he starts returning the favor by holding her down on the floor. While they both struggle there, we see the monster outside, quickly heading for the house. Blackwood has the upper hand, but not for long. The monster breaks into his house to jump on the man who has probably been fending it off for a long time. Today, however, is the day he becomes succeeded by a superior survivor. The monster drags him into another room and slaughters him. Now that Nat is on her own, she tries to hide from the unknown beast. Much to her dismay, the monster could go anywhere she can. There is simply no hiding from it. So Nat ends up going outside. She enters her car again, trying to start it. To do the trick, she has to lift the hood, where she makes a correction. With that, she is able to start the vehicle. The monster is on it, yet it's of little consequence to Nat. Her driving away causes it to come off. As she drives, she becomes furious and turns the car around. The monster is standing a good distance ahead of her. Once Nat starts driving at it, the screen goes black. Upon returning to the action, we see damage on the car in addition to the monster lying on the ground. Even with the force of the slam, it isn't enough to destroy the monster. We see the beast getting up behind her car. Nat attempts to restart the machine, but now, more than ever, she experiences the same problem as earlier. Then the monster breaks into the car to join her inside. This is the closest she has ever come to losing her life. Thankfully, the girl manages to escape while the monster is stuck inside. She places a piece of clothing in the gas tank before lighting it with her lighter. In a few seconds, the car containing the monster explodes. Nat walks away, victorious, and we see the photo of her with her mother burning. Later, a wounded Nat enters a certain building to get the receptionist's attention. She says she would like to check back in, implying she entered the psychiatric hospital from which Ethan helped her escape. Sadly, she never did come back for Francis like she said she would. 